Hey guys, Chris Camaro here again, and I've got another car repair slash maintenance video for you, uh, this time involving the Grand Prix. Uh, if any of you are stupid like me and you like to use your windshield wipers to clear all the ice and snow that's accumulated on your windshield instead of doing the, uh, you know, the normal thing, which is to clear it with a, with a ice, you know, a de-icer or whatever those tools are that scrape the ice off, then eventually you're going to you know pay for that one day when the uh wiper arm fails and you know strips on you which is what happened to me i get away with it you know 10 20 times and then eventually you know it's just not your day in this area here underneath that cap there's a there's a spline that this arm is sitting on and it kind of just grabs the wiper arm and if you put too much torque on it, it'll just tear the metal out and uh, just like a screw that gets stripped, it's a similar thing. By the way, the part number in this case that I'm using for the uh, driver's side wiper arm is 42539. And even though it says Mighty Clear on it, uh, it was advertised as a Dorman branded uh, wiper blade, wiper arm replacement. And um, I I don't know if it's OEM spec or not, but it, but it is... Uh, you know, there's nothing fancy about it. It is basically the same design uh, wiper blade as the uh, original equipment, and uh, it certainly appears visually to be the case. It doesn't look like it's any different uh, than than what was on there. So that's just for your reference if you need to purchase the same uh, the same thing. And just remember as well that the uh, passenger and driver side uh, arms are different, so there is going to be a different part number. Make sure you don't order the wrong one. It just as a general recommendation, if you think that you might need replacement parts for your car, uh, you might as well get them while they're in stock, even if you don't need them just yet. By the way, tools you're going to need, uh, I've got a 13 mil socket wrench here, and I've just got a screwdriver. All right. uh, you'll notice that the new wiper arm comes with a hose for the uh, windshield washer fluid. That's uh, normal, but not all wiper arm replacements will come with that, depending on who you buy them from. I mean, who the manufacturer is. So I guess some of the manufacturers, some of the third parties are kind of cheap, uh, and they don't include the hose. If your hose isn't damaged, I guess it's not a big deal. You can just reuse it. You'll notice where the hinge part is. It just looks like a, a hollow tapered, a hollow tapered bore is what it is, and it's made of aluminum. So what happens is your the spline side on the uh, on the car over there uh, that's a harder metal than this aluminum, so it'll it'll always uh, deform the aluminum when you press it on. So it creates its own spline on the inside of the aluminum surface on the inside of this bore, um, and that's how it creates its own thread, so to speak, and that's how it grips and and allows you to uh, to, to, to torque on this thing. So you have to tighten it down sufficiently to get that spline to form in the first place. And uh, once you set it, it's set. So you don't want to adjust it after that. So getting to the actual procedure, uh, first thing we got to do is get these uh, little uh, shiny plastic caps off the top of the uh, fasteners. So you can see that there's like a little plastic cover. And I can't really get it off just by pulling it off so you got to sort of jam something in there and get underneath it to pry that off okay not as bad as I thought all right okay so basically there's just a nut underneath this and this just keeps it from rusting and stuff so I'll just put that in a safe place, try not to lose it. And then go back and grab your socket wrench. 13 mil, as I said before. Naturally, it's in the wrong position. Okay, there we go, that's better. Okay. Okay, so that's not too bad either. 
and put that aside. Now this should just come up because, like I said, I stripped this one. If you're just replacing it and it still works, I can't imagine why you do that, but if you were, you might have to use a screwdriver or some tool to pry up on this, but this is already kind of buggered, so it should just... Uh, okay, maybe not. All right, I might need to... <sighs> might need to play with this a little bit so give me a second here guys when it comes to cars nothing is ever as simple as it's as it's supposed to be and this is just another example of of that being true um, I found I had to mix my methods a little bit to uh, to get this off it uh, it wasn't it wasn't forthcoming let's just put it that way so I ended up putting a set of vice grips around the entire thing and just reefing on it and hitting it with a hammer you can see I got a hammer over here um, try not to damage anything especially uh, this piece here which connects to the uh, to the motor if you damage that that's that's not fun to you know to have to fix that too so thankfully it's just the wiper arm that's broken you know initially and let's just keep it that way right so uh, be delicate but at the same time you might have to use some brute force to to pull this thing off notice the uh, the splines that I was talking about earlier um, you can see how the aluminum uh, is is kind of like the aluminum from the wiper arm has deposited onto the onto the spline itself I like to clean that out a little bit myself just so that you're not uh, getting a, a poor fit when you put the new part on okay so I'm just gonna take my screwdriver and get the corner of it in one of these little yeah and just kind of go up and down on these teeth here and you can see already that there's there's debris coming off of it or that you know the aluminum is sort of coming out actually this is not too bad this is this is happening pretty good this is working quite well I mean okay so hopefully you guys can see here that um, it's a lot cleaner now than it was before uh, maybe not perfect but good enough uh, for what I need to do with it um, I, I spent no more than 10 minutes just uh, going over it with the screwdriver so I think I'm ready to install the new one now uh, before we can do that However, we need to uh, disconnect the uh, hose that goes to the fluid. So the new wiper arm doesn't have any T-junctions or anything on it. The new wiper arm just has this hose at, that, that goes up to this point here. So that's what we're going to disconnect. We're just going to pull this off. And that, again, is probably a two-hand job. It's a two-hand job, but anyway, it's not too hard to do. Just uh, pull it off and it comes right apart. So now that I've got that out of the way, um, now the entire uh, wiper arm and wiper blade subassembly is free, so I can basically just remove it and replace it with the new wiper arm. So here's the new wiper arm here. So uh, as you might have guessed, just reconnect the hose piece first, and then we can get to the, the spline. I'm gonna tighten that on. There is a nipple on this um, this piece over here, so you do have to get the hose over that, and to do that you have to exert some force to physically push the rubber over that, that nub there. Uh, otherwise it'll probably pop off when you pressurize the line and it'll leak, or it'll just disconnect. So uh, again, not, not the end of the world, this is a very easy Part of the procedure but uh, still you just need to make sure that you put enough force that it's that the rubber is completely over top of that that nipple there and then that's that's nice and secure and, and, and good and, and we're all good um, now we just got to put this, uh, this spline on and tighten it down uh, 
I should mention at this point that if you want, you can do the, the wiper blade swap if you find that easier than, um, than doing that later. It doesn't have to be done in that order, um, but it may be easier for you to do that first. So uh, this is spring-loaded, and because it's spring-loaded, it's going to make the angle of this, uh, this landing here. It's going to put that at an angle to the base that it's supposed to sit on. So you're going you're gonna to want to put a preload on this hinge here, bend it first, so that... Well, it's difficult to do with one hand. I'll have to do this with two hands. But basically, you want to bend it sufficiently that that the uh, the bottom surface of this sits flat on that um, on that landing there. Otherwise, the spline won't engage properly, and you'll have a, a poor fit. It takes uh, a little bit of uh, brute strength to get this on because, like I said, you have to bend this hinge while you're putting it on. Uh, but you can do it and once once you get it on it's not going to want to come off because it uh, like I said that spring force is keeping it under constant pressure and it, it kind of keeps that uh, that that inner bore at an angle to the to the thread that you're putting it over so it's kind of like binding the whole time that's why it was difficult for me to get the old blade off uh, in, in hindsight um, all I did was I went into the car turned the car on briefly uh, turn the wiper blades on briefly. You can see that hard stop on the left <clears throat> and the uh, the wiper arm is just a little bit before it so there's a bit of a gap there. And the reason I did that is just so that uh, on this side it would home properly. What I mean by that is um, there's always resistance on the blade on the, sorry I keep mixing my terms. There's always resistance on the wiper arm and the blade uh, when it's fully seated properly and, and, and it's like fully installed, but right now it isn't. Right now it's loose, right? So it's going to give you a false idea of where you, you know, you, you might be inclined to just sort of bottom it out and say, hey, it's good, it's good to go, right? But if you do that when the other one is already bottomed out, uh, there's going to be a little bit of play in this because when it's loose and then you tighten it down, there's slack in the system that, that shouldn't be there. So you have to kind of compensate for that a little bit by overdoing it a little bit. So by not homing that one completely, this one will try to overshoot the hard stop when it homes. So when, uh, when, the, when the wiper blades go back to their home position, that wiper arms and wiper blades, when they go back to their home position, the motor's gonna try to push this one a little bit further than it's gonna try to push that one, but it's okay because this one's gonna have that extra slack in it from the first time installation uh, that, that, that's inevitable and you can't really do anything about. So once it hits the hard stop, it'll take that slack away and that one will home and this one will remain where it is. So then they'll both be sort of synchronized again. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but that's kind of the, the theory there. And if you give it a shot, you'll see what I mean. So now that we've got this on here, we're just going to get the nut that we, that we had and put the nut back on. And then after this is tightened down, then we'll deal with the wiper blade um, because that, that part isn't broken and we can reuse that. But uh, let's just deal with the nut first. So we're going to put the nut back on. And we'll go back and get the socket wrench. Tighten. Oh, by the way, that little metal bar you see on the left-hand side, that was uh, kind of an a piece that fell out while I was handling the wiper blade with the wiper arm it, it was kind of like jammed in the hinge here like you know how a fire extinguisher has that metal pin that you're supposed to pull out I think that's what that was it's not it's not part of the wiper arm assembly but it was just there to like I don't know hold it hold it in position or something it fell right out as soon as I uh, put any pressure on the springs so that's fine
As for tightening this thing down, of course you don't want to over torque, but at the same time you need adequate pressure to form the new splines. I think I'm there now. My my uh, socket wrench doesn't really want to move at this point, and, and the actual arm is actually moving now as a result of me applying the torque. It just came out of its home position there, so I think I'm good, and I'm going to test it in, in this uh, condition with this, with this amount of tor tightening on it. But um, let's just clean up the area a little bit, and then we'll, we'll give it a try. Uh, by the way, uh, you should really put the blade on first before you do this because otherwise you're going to be scratching the glass uh, with that with that uh, bare metal there. Now as far as getting the uh, old blade off the wiper arm that you removed, uh, these are sometimes a pain in the ass. I mean there is a technique to it and if you've done it a million times I'm sure it's not that bad. But basically if you, if you rotate the blade uh, you know out of line with the arm You'll notice this kind of chassis mechanism under here, and inside of that, there is a uh, like a little spring tab, which is this piece of metal right here. Depending on the design of the wiper blade, you might have a longer extension on this tab, but it's basically a little piece of sheet metal that holds this. Uh, well, the, 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 like like the arm itself goes in a loop in a horseshoe loop right and on the top of the arm there's a little hole and the, the sheet metal kind of grabs the inside of that hole to prevent the, the blade from coming off so by by bending this you're producing a, ca a cantilevering effect like a springboard that causes that uh, retention feature to just pop out of the hole if that makes sense so what you have to do is get like some needle nose pliers like I did and just push down on this spring tab. I, I suppose you could do it with your fingers if you're if you can actually get enough leverage with your fingers, but it kind of hurts a little bit, so maybe needle nose is better. But you push down on this and while you're doing that, you have to grab the entire wiper blade and and pull it down towards the uh, towards the base of the wiper arm and it should it should pop off of that uh, because the because the retention feature in the sheet metal is no longer sticking in that hole, it should just slide down, right? And now that it's off, I can show you what I mean. See, there's a see, there's a hole in the there's a window in the uh, in the wiper arm, so that's where the retention feature normally sits. And when you push down on the sheet metal in the wiper blade, it comes out of this and allows you to slide it. Usually it's seized on, so it requires quite a bit of uh, force, and that's what makes it such a pain in the ass to do. But that's how you do it. Um, so with that out of the way, you can just remove the uh, the wiper arm so that it's, you know, this is basically junk now. You can pretty much throw that out. But the blade is the part that we want to keep, right? Uh, and I'm just going to basically install this to the new wiper arm that we've already got on the car. So the, the little window that we were looking at before that's on the bottom now facing the glass. So uh, the retention feature being on this side which is also the same side the blade is on you have to rotate it around like this which makes it perfect sense because that's how the blade is going to touch the glass. And then you basically have to slide that right into the uh, into the chassis again until it clicks and pull it back until it clicks so what I did was I, I pulled the you pull the arm back until you can get an angle here and then you got it like I said you got to fish the arm through this this space between these two pieces of metal fish it through there and then like a hook you pull it back right and then this blade is now loosely on there. So now all I need to do really with this is to uh, finish the job by by sliding the blade forward and into that hook. And the detent should catch. That's the whole point anyway. If the detent doesn't catch because you damaged the sheet metal, then you're going to have to examine the, the wiper blade and make sure that it's still capable of of, of, of uh, snapping into place, but sometimes it's just a matter of uh, getting enough force to, to get it to click. 
yep, that's all it was. I just needed to push it harder. So now you can see, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the radius around this, uh, around the bend of this wiper arm, is is in line now with the with the wiper blade. So they're rotating around the same point. The uh, the sheet metal here has the same shape as the wiper arm bend radius. So they are lined up properly. It didn't exactly click, but I felt. I felt it kind of uh, shift into place. So it is it is fully installed now. So now we're going to put the cap back on because that will keep the nut from accumulating dirt and rusting and things like that. So just take that, push it back into place. It literally just snaps back on, just like that, no big deal. And then you want to test the wiper blades as you can see, I got the wiper blades on high right now and everything's working pretty good. Uh, blades are in full contact with the glass, they're in sync with each other, and everything seems to be just fine. If you guys like my videos, please hit the green thumbs up on the side of my video to show your support and uh, feel free to comment and uh, ask any questions and share your experiences as well. And I'll see you in the next video.